So now that you're about to finish the last tier of the sixth module, I hope you're feeling a little bit overloaded. Not in a bad or unmanageable way, but there's been a lot of material to cover so far. If you haven't taken a medical micro course, the new names and terminologies by themselves are quite overwhelming at times. Luckily, we're still only covering some of the basics when it comes to treatment of these bugs. Many are rare diagnosis and often self-limiting. But here are some common treatments if the disease requires it. Brucella is often difficult to get rid of, with recommendations usually consisting of both doxycycline and rifampin for six or more weeks to prevent relapse. For tularemia, streptomycin is one of the first to be used to treat this bug. Though it does pose some concerning side effects, it has held onto its efficacy for killing off the microbe. Although pastorella is sensitive to penicillins and other medicines, animal bites are often polymicrobial. The more broad-range ciprofloxacin, or even a tetracycline, would be a better choice. For the stepsisters, Gardnerella is treated most successfully with an oral treatment regimen of metronidazole, or a topical application of either metro or clindamycin. This is mostly decided by patient preference. As a general rule, all tick-borne bacteria are usually treated with doxycycline. Erythromycin has been shown to help with lymph node swelling in some cases as well. For the most part, this bacteria is self-limiting, and even the CDC states to contact an infectious disease specialist for serious disease. If a patient comes in with a bite mark on their body, pray the zombie apocalypse hasn't happened. Then treat for echinella. Any fight bite is going to be polymicrobial, just like an animal bite. Echinella is also resistant to many beta-lactam antibiotics, macrolides, aminoglycosides, and clindamycin. Amoxicillin with clavulinic acid, plus moxifloxacin, or a later generation cephalosporin, have been shown to be effective for treating this infection. Last but not least, coxiella. The 2017 CDC guidelines state that coxiella is usually self-limiting. Doxycycline can be used to shorten the duration of the illness, but is often not needed. There aren't really any other good current recommendations for this rare disease. To finish this module off, let's do a quick review of two topics. First, here is a chart of some common antibiotic resistant mechanisms seen in microbes. Unfortunately, the manner in which many bacteria procreate allow them to share these genetic alterations. So when one develops a gene for a new enzyme or protein pump, it can share it with others. There are other mechanisms as well for certain resistances, but these are the most common by drug class. Also, this would be a good time to introduce you to the Choosing Wisely project and point out a few things that were skipped in previous modules. Choosing Wisely was started by the American Board of Internal Medicine and is a way for practitioners and patients to get on the same page regarding certain treatments. It's basically a list of things doctors treat for, sometimes at the insistence of the patients, that they probably shouldn't. You can visit the Choosing Wisely page to download their entire 244-page manual or search out certain topics. In particular, the IDSA has a recommendation on page 208 of their top five recommendations. Though seemingly simple, these are things that many physicians might find difficult due to habit, other hospital practices, or patient pressures. You can also download their phone app. If you plan on going into primary care anytime soon, it will likely be something that you hear mentioned frequently at meetings.